Okay, so here's 11.5's video. We're going to talk about uh, probability with the fundamental counting principle, uh, permutations and combinations, right? So we're going to use the ideas of counting principles uh, to help us figure out the probability of a particular event that we're interested in. Which means we're going to have two objectives. Uh, the ability to compute probabilities with permutations, where order does matter, and compute probabilities with combinations, where order does not matter, right, from the last chapter. So here's our first example, example number one. We're going to have six jokes about books by Groucho Marx, okay, George Carlin, uh, Stephen Wright, Greg Ray, I'm going to put the four, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, and Phyllis Diller, right? So there's six comedians there, uh, and each are written on one of six cards. The cards are placed in a hat and drawn one at a time. What is the probability that a man's joke will be delivered first and a woman's joke last? All right. So um, what we want to do is find the events that we're looking for. How many possible events uh, could happen that we're looking for out of the total number of events uh, that are possible, right? And so, if you're looking for events and you want a guy to go first, right, and a woman to go last, well, basically that means that Phyllis Diller is, is at the end. So that means I have five men to pick from for the first spot. Now, I only have four to pick from for the second spot because, remember, I'm saving Phyllis Diller for last, right? So basically, I have the five men, four men, three men, two men, one man, man sorry, and then I have Phyllis Diller. All right. Out of a total of six total possible um, comedians, and so that's the six factorial, okay? Um, because the order does matter here in which uh, the men go. All right. Now, as we look at this, the the one here is not gonna when it multiplies by this, it's not gonna change its value, and so I'm just looking really at five, four, three, two, one, and so I recognize that as the five factorial. And then we can use the rules of reducing factorials like we saw um, in some earlier videos. Uh, the 5 is going to take care of everything but the 6. And so you're going to have 1 over 6. Okay. And of course, you can see that here. If I went ahead and took this 6 and expanded it out, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We could see that the... Uh, ones will reduce, the twos will reduce, the threes will reduce, the fours will reduce, the fives will reduce, and all I'm left with is one on the top and six on the bottom. Okay, so a lot of different ways of doing it, calculator, algebraically, all right, but that's the that's the answer there, one and six. All right, <clears throat> Ooh, that's the extra slide, don't need that. Now our favorite, the lottery, right? So Florida's lottery game Lotto is set up so that each player chooses six different numbers uh, from 1 to 53 with one Lotto ticket. What is the probability of winning this prize? So the idea here is the event is the one ticket that you bought, okay? And so that the total number of events that you're looking at are out of the 53 balls, I'm going to choose a uh, six, right? And the re why is this a combination? Well, because it doesn't really matter whether your ticket has 7, 8, 9 on it and the balls come up 9, 8, 7. The order in which the balls come up doesn't really matter as long as the three match. So that makes this a combination. And so we need to use the C here. Now if you go ahead and plug that into your handy dandy calculator, um, you see that this is 1 over 22,957,480. Uh, and of course, this makes us sad because it means that we probably won't win the lottery. And in fact, with so many possibilities, um, that's why we don't have a winner every time we have a drawing. Because if we don't sell about 23 million tickets uh, for, their, for a particular drawing, the chances are... Um, that maybe you don't have a winner at all. Okay, I don't know what those chances are. It would depend on how many tickets were sold, but you know, if you don't sell the full amount. All right. Moving on to example three. A club consists of five men and seven women. 
Three members are selected at random to attend a conference. Find the probability that the selected group consists of three men. Now this is just a group, okay? And I think that's a very important idea to keep in mind. Because it's a group and there's no rank ordering, what we're talking about are combinations, okay? And so what are the number of ways of selecting three men? Well, and if you think about it, the way of selecting three men from five, when order doesn't matter, is the five choose three. Okay, and what's the total number of possible combinations? Well, I'm still choosing three, but instead of it just being men, it's going to be out of the 12 women, right? So I'm going to have this slightly different idea of my events are going to be five choose three for the number of possible men versus the total, which is 12 choose three out of all 12 members okay and so if you do five choose three uh, you end up with ten from your calculator and if you do twelve choose three you end up with two hundred and twenty in your calculator and of course I can just reduce the zeros out there um, because of the base ten system and you get one over twenty two right and that makes us happy because we have the answer um, and this concludes our video.